Look, and you're watching Sporting Icons. All right, everyone. So I've got the current Commonwealth and EU Super Heavyweight Champion, Fraser Clark. Thanks very, very much for joining me today. No problem. So, how's everything with you in like a general life and what have you? Yeah, life, life's good, you know. It's, um, it's getting an exciting time, an exciting time to be Fraser Clark, to be honest. Um, yeah. You know, Olympic qualifiers just around the corner. Um, happy at home, you know. Beautiful girlfriend. Uh, my daughter's uh, three years old. Uh, everything's good. Three years old, wow. I remember them days. <laughs> <laughs> I remember them days. So, um, how long until you leave your friends, your family and everyone and just like, um, lock yourself away in camp ready for the European qualifiers for the Olympics? Uh, it's already started to be honest, life, life's a bit boring at the minute, um, obviously the exciting times are coming but at the minute it's just, uh, you know, there's, there's, no, uh, there's no pleasantries, nothing that nice, um, <laughs> I've got, um, we've got Kazakhstan on uh, Tuesday for a training camp. Wow. So, so that'll be uh, interesting and uh, difficult, but yeah, you know, we're already at that, that part of camp now where, you know, the real grueling stuff begins because I think, you know, it's March the March the 13th, I think it starts the uh, qualifier, so not long. Yeah, yeah, so March 14th to the 24th. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Yeah, at the uh, Copper Box. And um, if anybody wants, wants to uh, pop along and uh, support you all, I'll put a link for tickets in the description box of this video. Yeah, definitely, so, you know. It's about time we had, we had something on this scale in this country. You know, we had the Olympics and then it's been a bit quiet, but, you know, it's, it's top top level amateur boxing. Yeah. Well, amateur, if you want to call it that, but, you know, it's top level boxing and, you know, people get value for money and obviously, hopefully, see um, see me and my teammates qualify for the Olympic Games in Tokyo. I'm glad you mentioned that point because um, I was going to ask you in a bit because um, there seems to be like a bit of a misconception that uh, amateur boxing is. It's for kids, so it's not that important, but it's very important. You guys go through as much hard work as the pros. In fact, you guys probably fight more than the pros. I'd, I'd, li I'd like to see a pro that works as hard as anyone on, on uh, my squad. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, 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 we live, it's, a, it, it's, it's an amateur sport, as they say, but, you know, we live a professional life. You know, we train three times a day, five days a week. We we're away from, away from home, away from our loved ones, we travel all around the world. You don't get much more professional. No, I totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. And the thing is, I mean, you guys, um, you all spar the pros in that as well, didn't you? I know you do, especially yeah, with like Chisora, yeah, Joyce, Joshua. Yes, I mean, it's nice to mix up now and then. You know, you don't, you don't want to do too much with them because obviously it's two different sports. Like, people won't understand this, but mm. it's really two different sports. You know what I mean? So there's, there's different ways to, to box these um, the pros, there's different ways, obviously the pros fight different to the amateurs, it's, it's a lot really different, so I don't like it too much, I feel like it slows me down a little bit, but it's mm -hmm. nice to get in there, you know, um, you know, do four or five rounds, but obviously you, know, you won't see me there, you're doing the 12, 8s and 10s and whatnot, no, you see none of that, but, mm. um, you know, it's good to mix up with these guys. Yeah, it definitely is, definitely it is. Now, now before we start talking about like the Olympics and the qualifiers and everything, um, I want to get um, your thoughts on on what, well, in my opinion, was complete bullshit about like what happened to you when uh, you won your fight in the uh, World Championships and yeah. then they changed their mind. I've never seen anything like it in my life. <laughs> Neither have I. Um, yeah, you know what? It hurt at the time. It really hurt uh, because... I've been on, you know, I've, I've, I've represented Great Britain now for 10 years. Um, and that was, the, that was the first World Championships I've been to, obviously. I've been in competition with, you know, some of some of our great, greatest, you know, Joshua and Joyce. You know, what they've done speak for itself. And they was always my competition and I felt like it was my time. So, yeah. you know, after, after European Games, I picked myself up again. And I put myself through through the mill for the World Championships. And I got there and I, got, I felt like you could see a difference in me. Um... I could feel the difference in myself. Um, yeah. I, I, I boxed well, you know. Just I, I still wasn't my best, but I boxed, I boxed really well. And uh, we had a close fight, me and the Russian. Mm -hmm. But you know, to, from, from the judges seeing what they see, and they give me the decision, then they change their mind. It's just it's, it's, it's bad for the sport. Do you know what I mean? Well, in my opinion, it's the case. Um, if they're going to do that, then what's the point in having judges? Exactly. Exactly. There's no point whatsoever. But thankfully, and I'm sure that uh, um, you won't want to comment on it, but the, the same people who are making these decisions won't be part of the Olympics. Well, yeah, you know, that, that's... 
people don't, what people don't understand is, you know, they can sit behind a desk and, you know, press a button and judge and stuff, but, you know, this is my life, it's my livelihood, it's, it's what I live for, it's my dream, um, and for them people to take it away, I mean, I don't want to use the word cheating, but, yeah. you know, it don't seem to be fair what, what's happened on a few occasions, you know, not just to myself, to other fighters as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, oh, the top and bottom is this. I have to leave it beyond that uh, in the future. So I don't I don't put no blame on no one. If, if anything, if anything uh, you know, I look back in the mirror at myself and think, you know what, next time do more. No chance to even you know, go down that route. So it's a, it's a learning curve. That's a good attitude. That's it. Good attitude. So, I mean, as you mentioned there, because like uh, now it's your time. I mean, when we look back on say Olympics, um, more specifically, two thousand um, was it two thousand? Um, Audie Harrison was the hope. Two thousand four, we, we didn't really have anyone. Two thousand eight, David Price. Twelve, Joshua. Sixteen, Joe Joyce. But now two twenty is the year of Fraser Clark. Yeah, I mean, I, be, I believe you can put me put me you know on that list. I, I, I know I'm good enough to be with them guys. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to blow it up, but I might be the best out of a lot of them. Um, you know, I think people forget, like, the history we've got in the super heavyweights. Um, yeah. Before the Harris has started off, you know, he probably don't get the credit he deserves because his pro career didn't go as, as, it, as it should have. Right. But he, he sort of, he, you know, everyone that sort of boxes for Great Britain now, you might have, you might have Audley Harrison to, to thank for the situation that we're in, do you know what I mean, with the funding and everything else here. He won that gold medal, and I think I'm sure he did a lot for you know England and GB boxing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely, and I think that for this kind of thing, it shines a lot more light on what it is that you guys have to go through. Because at the end of the day, the Olympics is the pinnacle of your chosen profession at the minute, isn't it? Yeah, I mean that, that's what it's all about for me. Uh, I hate losing any fight. I hate losing anything, to be honest. But you know, the, if I get it right, these, these next six months, I've got to get it right. Uh, you know, for, for all, you know, records are for DJs. For all that in the amateur lot, in the, you know, in our game, records are for DJs. So it doesn't matter what, you, what you've lost, what you've done in the last three or eight years, five years, six years, whatever. What matters is qualifying for these Olympic Games in the next few months and going to the Olympics and performing and winning your medals. So do you look at every fight as if it's the final now then, do you? Now it's important, yeah. Yeah, well, every, every time I box... I've probably got, if you think about the qualifiers and, and then where there are box again in, before the Olympics at a tournament, let's say, for instance, I've got three tournaments left. I might, I might have 15, 15 fights left in my amateur career. They're very important. Yeah. They're very important, especially the qualifying ones and then obviously the Olympic Games. Uh, they're very, very important for me. Um, 100% dedication and 100% will to win. Um, I'll, 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 I won't leave the ring. Not, you're not doing enough, do you know what I mean? I, I'm going to... I couldn't look at myself and, you know, oh, I thought I could have done more. That won't happen. Mm-hmm. So this is a case of... Because obviously you wanted to go to the 2016. So um, I know that uh, you get asked this question a lot about like turning pro, but uh, you always put it off because you've been looking forward to this one. Is this where it all pays off for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've had to be patient. Um, I've had to listen to, to good people. Um, Professional boxing, you know, something I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to and I'm eager to being involved in. But, uh, like I say, you know, it, become, it becomes then, it then becomes, you know, it, your sole job, your livelihood. There's no, for me, you know, I, I know a lot of professionals, all my friends are professionals, and they don't seem to enjoy themselves as much as you do, you know, when you're on the squad with your friends, boxing, you know, for a place in the Olympic Games, traveling the world. These are the best days of my life. and. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I made the decision to stay because I believe that I've now put myself in a position to, to go on and win the Olympics, not just go there and compete. I mean, Rio was would have been fantastic for me. I, I believe, you know, I could have competed and won a medal. Uh, I, I, you know, I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd beat Tony Yoka, the, the, the guy that won the final, do you know what I mean, a couple of years yeah. I probably did previous. So, uh, but I really believe that this has come at the right time for me. So... You know, the professional game, like I say, is something I will be involved in it in the next 18 months. I'll be there. Do you know what I mean? It's not, it's not an issue. Um, I've just had to wait a bit longer. And I'm 28 years old, and people can say what they want about age, but I'm, a, I'm as fit now, as strong now as I've ever been. And when I, when I do get onto that stage, I'm going to explode. And you know, people 
people that have slept on me and haven't really talked about me that much, which isn't a problem. Because, you know, I'm one of them old school fighters that I believe, you know, my fist will do the talk when I step into that program. But for now, my sole focus is qualifying for the Olympic Games and, you know, winning the gold medal. So for those who are listening who don't understand the process, what's the process for you now with the qualifiers? As in, what do you have to do with these European uh, qualifiers? In, um... so, this is, so this is, obviously, there's all qualifying events going on around the world. I think the first one starts uh, in a couple of weeks. I think that's the, the, Asian, the Asian qualifier. So obviously, I'm all the different regions of the world. We've got, obviously, I'm from Europe. So we have the European qualifier in London. Um, for all the different ways, there's... You have to, to qualify for the games, you have to get to a, a certain number in that tournament. So for, for a certain weight, so like 52 kilos, you have to be in the top eight in that tournament. Mm-hmm. For me personally, if a high weight is the top four, so obviously that means reaching the semi-final of the tournament. Reach the semi-final, you've qualified. So it's actually a bit harder for you. Well, Yeah, it, yeah, it, it, but yeah it will be difficult, definitely. Um, but you know, if it was easy, it would be harder, wouldn't it? Well, <laughs> that is very true. That is very true. Um, yeah, actually, what do you think about the professional or some professional boxers returning and taking the place of uh, some guys who've been working hard for four years for the Olympics? Well, it comes down to, you know, I've obviously different countries and different federations, but for me, you know what I mean? If you wanted to, if you wanted to box the Olympics, you know, you, 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 had, you had your turn. I agree. You cho- you've chose to go professional. Going, going in for a world title, obviously, you've, you've changed your ambitions, you know what I mean? You, you didn't want the Olympic medal, you wanted a world title, so they put your focus and your energy into that. But then again, at the same time, I understand how big an Olympic medal is, and so do these pros, they, they see the carrot that's dangled, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, mm. it, it profile through the roof. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, it's a pride thing, you know, but obviously, like I say, they made that decision to not want to box the Olympic medal, or hence you sign a professional contract. You know, make your mind up one or the other. I totally agree with you on that one. For me, if you turn over into the pros, then that's your lot, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't have too much problem, for example, if you were in the pros, you kind of went as far as you did in the pros, then retired, and then maybe wanted to rejoin the amateur system. I don't have too much of an issue with that. But while you're still an active uh, professional, stay where you are. I mean, that, that is for me, really, as well. But like I say, you know, this the world, that, them pros, it's not really a sport, it's a business. And, if, if they get an opportunity to make their profile bigger, I understand them wanting to do that. But like I say, put your energy into becoming a better fighter and you know getting more opportunities for yourself. Uh, put yourself in a better position by fighting as a pro. Um, you know what I mean? Don't, exactly. don't jump into my shit. You know what I mean? Do your own thing. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So let's jump in our time machine and uh, you've uh, competed at the uh, Tokyo Olympics. Regardless of what happens, I mean, you are my pick to win the gold, by the way, so no pressure. But, um, so, would you definitely say that after this Olympics, you're turning pro? Yeah. I've done my time now. No, no matter the outcome, um, it's time for me to move on. And, you know, a, a new journey needs to start. Um, you know, I think I've got a few more years in me. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of opportunities to fight. I've got a lot of opportunities to fight. I've got a lot of opportunities to fight. Um, but I believe now at the time anyway, like like I say, the word professional boxing, I see a lot of young kids turning professional, 20, 21, 19, 18, and are you really a professional? You've got, you got to look at the title, it's professional boxing. Are you really a professional at 18 years old? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a few that are, there's a few that are, but the majority for me aren't, and they have very short careers. Um, yeah. I've, had, you know, I've had my days of messing around, and believe me, I have done. Um, yeah. Now, it's a serious business now. Now I'm, I'm ready to be a professional. Do you know what I mean? I'm ready to I'm ready to live the life more than I was when I was a little bit younger. I was a bit naive to it. Or I thought, you know, you, you can you can uh, sort of you can cheat your way through this game. And it's only as you get older and things get harder and you know you realise there's no cheating in this game. You know, you you either in it or you're not. I'm glad you mentioned that because um, my my mentality is um, is this. Once you turn pro, then me as a boxing fan, I expect, I don't want to be hearing about how, well, I didn't have too much amateur career and blah, blah. Well, that's kind of your fault, unless it's not your fault, fair enough. But I think that to those who um, who only had, say, um, a few amateur fights, like, uh, for example, I mean, I don't want to like, like a cool names, because uh, like a Dan Dubois, for example, he's probably, he's probably like a good friend of yours, but 
I don't really, really want to be hearing, say, Frank Warren saying, but he hasn't had too much amateur career, so now he's got to be learning. It's like, well, that was your opportunity to learn. Now I expect. I mean, when you look at someone like Dane, I think uh, I sort of, it's, a, it's a little bit different because obviously there's, 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 there's boxing fans and there's heavyweight boxing there. You know, there's, there's, there's probably, you know, life-changing money being, being down in front of his face, which I understand, yeah. you know, you want to look after yourself, probably look after your family and whatnot. But, of course. Um, I believe, you know, I believe Daniel could have, you know, between me and him, we would have been pushing each other all the way to these Olympics, you know what I mean? Because he, he's really improving as an amateur, but mm-hmm. obviously he's doing, he, has, he, hasn't put, he hasn't put a foot wrong as a professional, to be honest. So, he's looking you know, really maybe, good. Maybe, yeah, he's looking really good. He's impressive. I mean, you talk about his opponents, but that's his job just to get in there and knock him over. And of course. Whoever they, put, whoever they put in front of him, and he, he's handled it, you know, more than well. So, I can't, I can't really... But I know what you mean about, you know, the experience and stuff like some of these you'd lie away so that turn pro quick and they promise this and promise that. Yeah. You know, you're not rushing your way through life. Learn your craft. Uh, you know, people that think you're, they're going to get paid millions to be superstars be on the TV all the time. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> I've been around enough, enough top pros to realise that, you know, it's, it's a long process and, you know, some, some of these kids, that their, their career's over before it's even started. So... My, my advice is, you know, stay amateur, get in your national championships, win your national championships, try and represent your country, get that international experience, because it's invaluable, invaluable and it's great memories as well. Mm. Plus thing, and do you guys get to see the world as well? Yeah, you know, like, if it wasn't if it wasn't for, the, for this job and if it wasn't for me boxing for my country, I wouldn't have been half the places I've been. So, yeah. you know, I, I appreciate it and, you know, I realise I'm, I'm very lucky and very blessed to be in the position I'm in. So after the Olympics, um, have you already had like um, offers? Obviously, you can't say like a too much, but have you had offers to sign with like promotional companies and that? I'll be honest with you, no, I haven't. Uh, oh. I'm not. I'm not sure if that's. I'm not sure if that's because you know everyone. I, I make it clear in every interview I do. You know, I'm not really interested right now. When the time comes, right? Yeah. You know, if, if they don't come knocking on my door, which obviously when I, when I go and do what I do at the Olympics, I imagine I will do. But if they don't. I'll mm. go and knock on their door, it's not a problem to me. Yeah. I, you know, I just want to give myself the best opportunity with the best group of people, whoever that may be, to get to a world title. At, I want to, you know, I'm, 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 I'm almost at the pinnacle as in the amateur format of boxing. Mm-hmm. I want to do the same. Thing. So whoever can guide me, you know, the best way to do that is that as a professional, that's where I will go. I know that uh, you're good friends with, say, like uh, like um, Joe Joyce, uh, Derek Chisora, Anthony Joshua, etc. So, is it one of those kind of, kind of like a situations? I know it's, it's, it's probably better to think about it, but potentially you could end up fighting your good friend Anthony Joshua one day. No, one, one day, one day that might that might happen. And um, if, if, if you're in my position and you don't look forward to that, there's something wrong. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. obviously you. Test yourself on the biggest stage against the biggest names, uh, and you want to do well. So, you know, obviously, Josh is, is a great friend of mine and uh, someone who I look up to. But, you know, uh, I'm sure after, afterwards, you know, I'm sure we'll be fine. But, like I said, it's a business, and, and I mean business. You know, when it comes down to it, it's competition, um, you know, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Competition is what I thrive off. That's what I love. So. Yeah. No, I take no business in that respect. That's fantastic. Now, I know that uh, it wasn't really your intention to kind of like start it all off, shall we say, but uh, you have become somewhat of a ambassador, a spokesperson, and in fact, one of the originals to say, put the knives down, put the gloves up. Yeah, man, 100%. Um, that, that's something I feel quite passionate about. And, you know, it's, it's upsetting to see, to see that, you know, the way the world is turning now and the way things are going. Yeah. Well, like, you know... I, I, obviously, I was I was on the receiving end of of, of a knife. You know, I me, mean? I got stabbed three times, and it was uh, that's about three four years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, three years ago. It was I, I opened it for me. Yeah. So, so I just you know, obviously, I, I don't think of myself as you know this superstar or anything like that. But obviously, I've got a bit of an influence. You know, I, I do what I do. If I can spread the message, why wouldn't I? Do you know what I mean? Obviously, it saves saves an upset mother, an upset girlfriend. A baby growing up without a father, um, you know, a little exactly. brother being lost. It saves all that. So if I can spread the message, then if people want to listen, listen. But you know, like I like I say, them decisions don't just change your life; they change everything. They change the whole. They change your life. 
your family's life, another family's life. You know, it's just foolishness. No, I think that um, it's important. I know you're not looking for it, and uh, and uh, you never did, but you pretty much started it all. Let's be honest. Yeah, I, I can't, you know, I, I said something about it just because, like, I, I, I was very lucky to, you know, to find boxing when I did it at the age of 11. Not that I had a bad life because, you know, my parents, you know, they're, they're the best people in the world and they've done the world for me. You know, they, they brought me into a, into a nice life. Don't get me wrong, I've, I've never been a spoiled child, but, you know, they, they taught me what right from wrong. And, and there was always food on the table and clothes on my back, so... Mm. Uh, I didn't really come from that, you know, let's say that thuggish or, you know, that sort of, that sort of uh, background, but I, uh, oh, I wasn't underprivileged even, I was, you know, but I saw, I've ended up in situations through, you know, through choices as a teenager and whatnot, and yeah. you, you sort of, you know, you, it's only when you get older and wider, it's been a long time to grow up, let's put it that way, like, mm. you know, I, I, I'm finally thinking like, like a proper man, you know, for a long time I was... I, I, you know, I was thinking a bit stupid, a bit, a bit, uh, let's, let's say a bit drastic, but, mm -hmm. you know, you, you grow up and you, you, see, you, you see how quickly and how precious life is. And I lost a friend in 2009, he got stabbed once, and, uh, you know, he died, he died instantly. So, that, that was the real, that was a real wake up for me. And then when it, once it happened to me, I thought, you know what, it might help, it might not, but we've got to tell people about it, um, you know, we've got to tell people this is wrong. Yeah, but seriously, though, I mean, like, well done to you for, for starting it all off. I mean, if you hadn't have spoken about it, who knows? Because for, like, the last year or so, we've seen, like, a lot of the knives down, gloves up thing, and I don't think that people actually realise it was you. I know you're not looking for it, but it was you who kickstarted it all. Yeah, well, you know, like I said, I wanted, I wanted to spread the word. People, people have took it and ran with it, which is, which is good. It's amazing. Mm. You know, like... The more people that spread the word, if one person can spread that word every day, you know, there's a lot of people in this country that gets around quick. And, you know, if it makes someone think twice, then, it's, you know, it's not too bad. Very, very true. Well, so let's get, like, a couple of uh, predictions from you before I let you go. Sure. Right. So, but, um, um, apparently, and it, and it is rumoured, for April, uh, Dubois versus Joyce. If you had to put, put your car on it, who's going to win that? Football. It's tough one, oh, isn't it? <laughs> It's a difficult one because this is my uh, it's my Volkswagen Tiguan and it's actually, I'm actually sponsored by Volkswagen, so I can put the car in. It's not one, you know what I mean? Um, you know, um, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll be dead honest. I think I think Joe Joyce wins the fight. Um, yeah. My reasons why? I think you know his caliber is underestimated. Um, he's been to the pinnacle as an amateur. He's not looked bad at all as a professional. He beat everyone in front of him. I think he boxed the better opponents. Um, I think his maturity in his engine plays a big part. Saying that, Daniel Dubois is a ferocious puncher. Believe me, uh, <laughs> it's a great so it's a great fight. But for me, George, George wins it. And, and I know people, that's going against what a lot of people think. But believe me, I've, I've been in the ring with both of both both very good fighters uh, on the day. I think Joyce wins the fight. So is Joyce actually a lot faster in the ring? Because on TV he doesn't look very fast, but listen, I'll... listen. Let me let me tell you something about Joe Joyce. Things aren't always what they seem visually. Yeah. He might. I've, I've heard it all about him. He's robotic. He's stiff. He's got no movement. Well, let me tell you now. You try and stop that robot. That robot. <laughs> you try and stop this because he's got the engine. He's got a better engine than most middleweights that I know. His yeah. punch out is, you know, is so much. He's fit, he's strong, he's fast. He's got a good jab, um, and he's heavy-handed. As a heavyweight, you know, there isn't. If you obviously, I think he needs to. I think he's. He knows. I think everyone knows. He needs to, you know, try and defend a little bit more. Yeah. If you, he's got the fundamentals, and it took him to Olympic gold, or Olympic silver, really. But yeah. So, so. You know, he's a, he's a lot better fighter than people give him credit for. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. And then what about Wilder Fury? You think Fury's going to do it? Yeah, I do. I really do believe he is. Uh, Have I you sparred him? I've never sparred with Fury. And, uh, I can be, I can sit here honestly and say I'm, I'm glad about it because he just looks nightmare, don't he? Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, he just looks like he's completely done. Nightmare. Yeah. But you know, I think Fury this time. You know, I think, I think. People think about heavyweights and think broads and good power and everything. The brain's one of the strongest, you know, one of the strongest tools you can have. And I think 
He's definitely got the brain. He's definitely got the ability. Um, they're both going to adjust, obviously, to box each other before. Mm-hmm. But I think you know, he's cut it enough, and I think he's had that time now. I see he's in camp in Vegas. And, you know, he's got good sparring partners over there. So I believe Tyson will win that fight. And I, I hope he does. You know, I want, I, want, I, want, I want a British person, you know, to have these straps. You know, it's just, just the way it is. Exactly. I mean, for me, I'd love nothing more than to see... Um... So, say so, uh, Tyson Fury to beat Wilder, get that belt, go defend it against Dean White, and then the winner go fight Joshua for undisputed. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Like Dylan White, Dylan White, we're not speaking about him. White, why you mentioned his name? Like, yes. You know, yeah. I, I think I think it's disgusting the way that these federations are treating him. Uh, Agree. The guy, the guy that boxes anyone you put in front of him, like, and and he does the job. So, you know, they need, they need to sort it out, you know, he's supposed to box wider and he hasn't gone through and whatnot, but, you know, yeah. I'd hate to be in it. I'd love to be in this position at the same time. Yeah. Can't be nice, bro. you know, I'm, I'm wishing him the best and hope hope that, you know, between his promoter and between the, the governing bodies, they, they get him a world title shot real soon. It does seem that uh, somebody somewhere don't want him to get that title shot with Wilder, doesn't it? Exactly. No. I totally agree with you. Absolutely disgusting. But, I mean, I won't say too much because I keep getting in trouble for it. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I do. All right, Fraser. So, uh, thank you very much for joining me. Um, once your qualifiers are all done, um, um, I, um, I, I'd love to get you back and then we'll go through who's in the Olympics and, and like, uh, your thoughts on each of these guys. And-